All right, shalom, shalom. Testing the audio real quick. All right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, as always, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim al Shai, or Chakwadash, which Yahweh, that's the Heavenly Father's true name. Yahweh Shai, that's whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, is his true name. And Chakwadash, that is the Holy Spirit. And I also want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well in the scriptures. And salutations to all the brothers out there who are pushing this word in all truth and in all sincerity. And um, I uh, entitled this uh, um, lesson, Being Purged, so our offerings or sacrifices can be accepted. And pretty much um, earlier today when I was at the library, I was uh, reading the book of Malachi today. And, and there's a particular verse that, you know, um, basically inspired me to, you know, to do this lesson. All right. And uh, we'll get it in a moment. You see, and um, it pretty much goes into how, you know, we're being purged, right? And so our offerings can be accepted, you see? And, you know, the things that we go through, you know, on our day-to-day, -day, you know, uh, uh, basis, all right? These things are to make us better, okay? This chastisement that we're going through right now, all right? All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. As the scriptures say... All right, that, uh, Salaki, that chastisement that we go through, all right, it doesn't feel, you know, um, joyous at first, all right, but it's grievous, you know. Hey, when you uh, um, are dealing with, you know, health issues, when you're uh, having demons, you know, mess with your mind, when you're, you know, going through uh, um, financial issues, relationship issues, so on and so forth, those things don't feel good at first, okay. You know, but there's um, a lesson to be learned when you, you know, when you're going through these afflictions, these trials and tribulations. All right. You know, what's happening is the Lord's teaching you a lesson. OK. And secondly, the Lord's purging you. You see. And it's a, a very important thing. All right. And let's go into this word purge. OK. Um, give me one moment. So lock you ended up uh, closing off the app. But this is the. Um. Etymology for the uh, word purge. All right, give me one moment. There we go. All right, here we go. Etym online. So let's get the word purge, okay? And it's a verb. All right. And it's from the 13th century, which means clear of a charge or suspicion. Wash, clean, refine, purify. Okay, morally or physically. You see, right now we're getting washed, we're getting cleansed, okay? You know, we're getting purified, all right, by these, you know, trials and tribulations. You see, these things are, are, are much needed, all right, for our salvation, you know. Because uh, going back to that Hebrews, which, you know what, let's get it. Let, let's start off with that. Let's get Hebrews, the, um, I think it's the uh, 13th chapter or the 12th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Let's get it. All right, because it talks about how, you know, we... You know, we're, we're being chastised and it doesn't feel um, joyous, all right, at first. But afterwards, it yields what? That peaceable fruit, okay? This is uh, Hebrews 12 and 11, and it reads here, Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You see? It's going to yield that peaceable fruit, all right? You know, these things that we go through, you know, like once you uh, uh, finish, you know, the test that the Lord puts in front of you, okay, hey, 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 hey it's going to yield a, a peaceable fruit of righteousness, all right? And that chastising, or that word chastisement goes into your moral improvement, makes you a, a better individual, all right? And as I stated before, these things are, are much needed. Okay, because if we don't get purged, our offering would be tainted. Okay, it'll be a tainted offering. We would have basically an offering like Cain. Okay, you know, it, it, what happened to that uh, offering? It got rejected. 
The Lord didn't want it. And whose uh, uh, offering got accepted? It was Abel's. You know, Abel, uh, you know, um, you know, came in, gave that offering, all right, in sincerity. He did what he was uh, uh, supposed to do, all right? He did things, you know, righteously, and the Lord accepted that, you know? The Lord accepted that. And we got to come in that same spirit. Remember that, all right? But let's get this Psalms 94. Got a precept written down. I'm not really too sure what it says. But let's get it, though. Let's see what it, what it says. This is, uh, was it Psalms 94? Uh, the 12 verse. All right. Oh, this is a good one. This is us, uh, uh, Psalms 94 and 12. Blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth, O Lord, and teachest him out of the law, that, that, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. <laughs> you see, blessed is the man all right, whom thou chasteneth, O Lord. All right, so if you're going through chastisement, if you're going through trials and tribulations, okay, in your walk, that is a good thing. You know, this is not supposed to be a cakewalk, so to speak, man. You're supposed to be going through stuff. You know, like I said earlier, you might be going through some physical uh, ailments. You know, you might have demons, you know, uh, messing with your mind. You might be going through some relationship issues, financial troubles. All right, you might uh, deal with, you know, being shipwrecked. All right, you know, basically the modern day uh, being shipwrecked is your car breaking down, you see, so on and so forth. All right, hey, you getting, you know, uh, pulled over, getting a ticket, possibly going to jail, you know, for something, right? These things are, um, are chast you know, a, a chastisement from the Lord. And it has said there, blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth, O Lord, and teacheth him out of the law, that thou may givest him rest from the days of adversity, all right? And look, remember, brothers, um, perilous times are coming, okay? Perilous, perilous times are coming, all right? They're fast approaching. And with that being said, we, all right, we must be, you know, um, you know, um, you know, we must be presenting the right offerings to Yahweh. You know, our, our, our works, our deeds, our actions, our thought process, you know, the thought process that we have, hey, the, the, those are all offerings uh, to the Lord, man. Okay? We can't have, you know, no BS offerings, you see? All right? But um, let me get um, that scripture in Malachi real quick, all right, before I go any further, because this is what um sparked the idea, all right, for this um, lesson here. This is uh, Malachi chapter 3 and 3, and it says here, And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Okay? And look, even though it says the sons of Levi, which is basically the priesthood, right? Now... All 12 tribes are uh, 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 a part of the priesthood, okay? A word nation of, of priests, as the scriptures say, all right, in the book of, uh, I believe it's a, a, a First Peter. I think it's also mentioned in Exodus, if I'm not mistaken, okay? The whole nation are priests now, okay? So the Lord, it said here that the Lord is going to purify the sons of Levi, meaning the priesthood, all right, and purge them as gold and silver, which we uh, we uh, uh, went into that word. Purging means cleansing, purifying. Okay? And it says that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old, as in the former years. You see, once we get purged, okay? Once we, once we get corrected, chastised, okay? Our offerings are going to be pleasant unto the Lord. That's why it says here in Sirach, the 35th chapter, all right, which, uh, let's get that real quick. The main point is going to be in the 7th verse, but I'm going to have to start up above, okay? But it talks about how the sacrifices of a just man is acceptable, okay? You see? And the reason why is because that, that uh, just man got purged. He got purified, okay? You know? He got cleansed, you see? So a purging is an important uh, a process of us getting back into Yahweh Shai. Okay? 
But let's get this. This is a, uh, what is this, a Sirach 35, and we'll start at 1. All right, it says here, He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough, and he that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. It says, He that requite, uh, requiteth a good turn offereth fine flour, and he that giveth alms sacrificeth praise. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord, and to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation. So basically, these are your your uh, uh, your acts, your deeds. Okay, these are all offerings to Yahweh Hashem Shai. Okay, it says, "Thou shall not appear empty before the Lord." So you gotta have works, man. You know, because it, it even tells you this in um Second um, Ezra. By your faith and your works, that's how you're going to get uh, saved, all right? And uh, remember, faith and works are synonymous with one another. We'll uh, get uh, the book of James to prove that, but we'll get this first. This is um, 2 Ezra, all right, chapter 9. I believe it's chapter 9. Let me get it real quick. Uh, chapter 9, and... Um, We'll start at uh, we'll start at five main points and seven, well, and then we'll go to actually we'll go down to eight though. This is a uh, second uh, Ezra nine and five, for like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning, and an end, and the end is manifest. Okay, it says even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and ending in effects and signs, and every one that shall be saved. And shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils, and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them uh, for me from the beginning. So the elect, okay, they've been sanctified from the beginning, okay, to be uh, to be uh, preserved, all right, from the uh, from the said perils that are coming. All right, when you read up above, it goes into the. The earthquakes, the uh, uproars of the people, all right? Basically, the end of times, man, all right? The judgments, you see? But what, what, what do these uh, individuals have? They have faith and works, okay? You see? Works are, are, are very important, and, and that's basically your offering, man. Though Those are your sacrifices. Now, let's get the book of James, all right? Because the book of James... Tells us that our um, that our works, you know, show our faith. Okay, let's get this real quick. This is um, this is the book of James. Um, where is it? Right here. This is the book of James, chapter two, and uh, seventeen. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. It says, "Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works." Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You see, you got to have uh, uh, um, works in order to have faith. Because if you really believe, you would be doing the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. All right? You would be uh, charitable. Okay? Uh, you would go out and teach on the highways and byways. You would feed the flock, as the scriptures say. A, a, you would uh, uh, change from your, um, your wicked ways. Okay? You will become that new man. All right? You see? Because you got a lot, of, I'll say this, you got a lot of uh, people in the churches, right? They'll, they'll say they believe and they have faith. But look at their works and their deeds, man. Okay? They're, they're, they're all hypocrites. You know, all, all they do is um, commit adultery, first and foremost, spiritually. All right? And then secondly, they commit adultery, you know, amongst each other all, all day long. Okay? A, the, the pastor has a bald head, a, a booty a face, okay? There's pedophilia going on in, in these churches. You know, that's sick as all hell, all right? Hey, you got, um, what else going on in the churches? Hey, you got uh, uh, people eating abominable foods. You see, man, they're a bunch of hypocrites. But hey, but what do they say? They have faith. But look at their works, man. It's completely opposite of what Yahweh Bashim El Shai wants, man, all right? You see, so... If you're going to say you have faith, you have to have works. And like I said, those works go into uh, uh, your sacrifices. Okay? You see? But let's get um, back into Sirach chapter 35. 
and I will reap four again. Thou shalt not appear empty before the Lord. And let me get this one real quick too. This is uh, Revelation 22. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Revelation uh, uh, 22 and uh, where is it at? Um, 12. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Okay? So you're going to get judged on your works. All right? As it says in the book of Corinthians, let me get it. I forget where it's at exactly that we're all going to have to appear before the judgment seat of uh, uh, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay? All right? Whether we, you know, have done good or, uh, or evil, all right? Let me get that real quick. Appear. Um, this is um, 2 Corinthians 5 and... Um, You know what? Let me go up above. Let me start at 7, actually. Main points in 10. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, which confident, uh, when you break that word down, it goes into uh, having faith, all right, with faith. With We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. It says, wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Okay, so it just said right there that, that, that we labor. All right? You know, hey, the, the scriptures in the book of Hebrews talk about, uh, it, it, it says um, that, you know, that we have to labor to enter into that rest. Okay? Which said that that's us putting, uh, 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 you know, the work in, man. Us doing what Yahweh Bashim Shai says, man. Okay? That, that that's uh, uh, some works right there. You see, that's labor. All right. It says, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So we're gonna get judged on our works, man. All right. And you see, you don't want to be um. As uh, um, the um, the parables talk about the um, the talents, you don't want to be that, that 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 one guy that hid the talent in the dirt, man, who didn't produce. Because what happened? Hey, the Lord was angry with him, all right. You know, and, and basically destroyed him, man. It, it, it says uh, after that parable, it says what? Uh, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see, there's going to be a lot of people out there that. You know, know that they're Israelite, that know the names of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. All right, that say you know say they have faith, right? That that aren't gonna you know make it out of this destruction. Okay, a lot of people are gonna die, man, and that's because a lot of them are lazy, man. They didn't want to do anything. There's a lot of able-bodied men out there, right? That know that they're Israelites, that believe uh, according to what they're saying, and they're not. Um, Going out there to the uh, to the camps to listen and learn, they're not um, presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice. They're still uh, uh, being jokes out here. They're one foot in the uh, in the world, one foot in the truth. Okay, they're half stepping, man. But see, in this uh, in this thing of ours, all right, in this truth, all right, hey, you got to be all in like a poker player. That's why uh, Yahweh Shai said in the Book of Revelation that um, I rather you you be um, hot or cold. And not lukewarm. And what did he, well, what did he say? That if you're lukewarm, he's going to spew thee out of his mouth, man. You see? All right? Lord's not playing with people, man. You see, a lot of guys, they're going to get, they're going to get the boot, man. Okay? They're going to get the boot. All right? And they're going to be judged. And these judgments that are coming are, are going to be so horrific. The things that are coming to this earth are not going to be pleasant at all. You know, and you got to remember the Lord can systematically break you down, you know, take you out bit by bit. It doesn't have to happen just, you know, like that. All right. The Lord is the king of terrors, man. Remember that. That alone should uh, uh, put fear in you. All right. Oh, man, if I don't do what Yahweh Shai says, hey, man, he can make me a cripple. All right. 
And with that being said, uh, he can make me a cripple, survive all these uh, horrific events, make me starve but still keep me alive. All right, may, may make me uh, allow me to get brutally beaten. Okay, and then I'll, I'll ultimately get hit by a missile. Oh, see all my family die before that. You know, that's terrible. You know, and those are just some things that are popping up in my mind. You know it's going to be way worse. You know, whatever the Lord gives you is going to be way worse. But uh, back in Sirach 35 and 4, Thou shalt not appear empty before the Lord, for all these things are to be done because of the commandment. The offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat. Okay? See, the offerings of the righteous maketh the altar fat. You're going to have a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, offerings to the Lord, meaning you're going to have a lot of works then. Okay? And the sweet savor thereof is before the Most High. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable, and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. See, the sacrifices of a just man is acceptable. All right? And how are those offerings accepted? By us being purged. Uh, by us, you know, going through this hell. All right? You know? And the Lord said that he was going to... Uh, Throw us in the furnace of a, of affliction. Okay? Throw us in the furnace of adversity. You see? This is Sirach chapter 2. Main points in 5, but I'm, I'm going to start at, uh, I'm gonna start at uh, 1, though. Okay? This is Sirach 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright, and... Constantly, constantly endure. All right, so you're going to constantly go through things, and you're going to have to endure these things. You're going to have to uh, 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 um, overcome them. All right, you're going to have to, uh, you know, bear your cross, deal with deal with things. Okay, and it says, and make not haste in the time of trouble. So, when things, you know, you know, get a little, you know, shaky, so to speak. You know, hey, hey, the waves get rough, so to speak. You know, hey, you, you just can't, you know, abandon ship. You got to deal with it. Remember, call on Yahweh Hashem Al Shai. You're going to get through these things if you call uh, on Yahweh Hashem Al Shai. All right? It says here, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. All right? You see, if you cleave unto the Lord and you don't depart, are you, you 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 stick with Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai? The Lord is going to increase you at the at the uh, at the last end, all right. And you see, that's what we, that's what we want, because a uh, we want um first and foremost the Lord to forgive us. With us being you know forgiven for you know uh, uh, from our sins, you know we get um uh, salvation, okay. Salvation comes the transformation. The transformation leads to the glorification and the dominion, man. All right, you see, these things are um, are worth it. You know, these these uh, uh these trials and tribulations, these hardships that we go through, all these things are worth it because at the end of the day, this is our reward. All right, our reward is great, man. You know, our power is is, is so beautiful. You know, because we could have been cut off as a nation. All right, we, you know, the Lord could have, um, you know, you know, destroyed us for our sins, our wickedness. All right, but He didn't do that. You know, He kept His word that He promised to our forefathers. Okay, now He's giving us a chance, an opportunity, a shot to get back in His good graces, man. And then if we, uh, you know, continue to do what He asks us to do. He's gonna forgive us for all the BS that we that we've done, and then give us everything. You know, our power, our power is you know uh, a great, uh, a great uh, and you know merciful and then forgiving power, man. You know. All right, but uh, let's get back to this. Uh, this is Sirach, um two and four. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. All right, you see, um, acceptable men, all right, a, they're going to be tried in the furnace of adversity. 
all right? And you're going to be going through, uh, while you're going through the uh, furnace of adversity, all right, you're going to get purified, which that ultimately is going to uh, uh, lead to our sacrifices, our offerings being accepted, okay? You know? But, um, let's get, a. Uh, Let's get this um in um the uh, the book of Zechariah, all right. Let's get Zechariah. Hey y'all, Bashim Shabrakatah, Shalom, Shalom. But let's uh let's get that book of Zechariah real quick. All right, this is uh Zechariah chapter uh uh what is this thirteen and uh, we'll start at eight main points in nine though. This is uh Zechariah thirteen and eight and it reads here. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, all right, and that land is talking about here in America, okay? It says, uh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, all right? So two-thirds of our people are going to die here in America, man. They're not going to last. And I'll say this, hey, the wicked uh, Israelites that are scattered throughout the world, all right, that survive, hey, the, the, uh, the, the um, you know, the nuclear destruction, hey, those rebels, as it talks about, I think it's in Ezekiel. Hey, they're going to get purged, man, or and destroyed, man. You know? All right? We're going to be on some seek and destroy shit, all right? The Lord's going to uh, grant us that power, all right, to, to search out these wicked Israelites. And they're going to be, you know, uh, be destroyed, man. The Lord said, hey, those that, um, um, I forget where it's at. Hold on. Let me, let me get it. I, I was misquoted this. But basically, um, those that, that, um, don't uh, allow me to reign over them. Bring them hither so you can uh, destroy them, man. All right? You see? The Lord's going to allow us to uh, to do these things. I think it's in the book of Luke, though. Hold on. Give me one moment. Here we go. Right here. This is uh, Luke chapter 19 and 27. But those my enemies, which were not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. And when you go into that word slay in the, uh, the, the Spanish... I remember um, one of the uh, Spanish-speaking uh, brothers brought this out. I believe it was the brother Chacal out here in uh, Chicago. I believe he's the uh, first brother I heard this from. When you go into the Spanish, that word slay goes into uh, decapitation, man. Hey, so a lot of us are going to be those uh, 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 executioners, man, for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. All right? All right? Hey, the, the Yahweh Shai is going to basically say, off with their head. And we're just going to slice their goddamn heads off, man. All right? You know? So hey, you 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 uh two thirds whether you be here in America or, or 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 if you're around the world like I said and you survived the, the great destruction you're gonna get judged man you're gonna get put to fucking death man all right you see but let's get back into Zechariah thirteen and eight and it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord two parts therein shall be cut off and die but the third shall be left therein and that third is talking about the elect the one third all right. 144,000 in the uh, innumerable multitude, okay? Verse 9, and I will bring the third part through the fire, okay? First and foremost, it's that spiritual fire, okay? And then secondly, that actual physical fire, because the elect, they're going to they're gonna get beamed up, all right, in, into the chariots as this place is getting destroyed, man, simultaneously, okay? You know? And that shows you the balance of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, salvation and destruction are going to come uh, uh, at the exact same time. You know, and it says here, uh, let me keep reading um, to the fire. And we'll refine them as silver is refined and we'll try them as gold is tried. Okay, they shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is my power. You see? Hey, the, the Lord is um is gonna uh, accept the offerings of, of the uh, of the elect, man. Okay? And that's because they got purged, man. Okay, they they were uh, we read the definition of a purge. It goes into being purified, cleansed, okay, washed, you know. They they went through stuff. All right, so that their offerings uh, can, can be accepted, man. There's their sacrifices, their works, man. And the Lord's gonna say, "These are my people right here. The, these are my 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 chosen." What does it say in that second Ezra, the um, 16th chapter? Then shall 
thou know whom I'm not chosen. People are going to know in that day. All right. Because the Lord is going to protect us, shield us, guide us, and then ultimately save us. And they're, they're going to um, be um, a lot of these people. They're going to um, they're going to be in the uh, in that stead of the uh, that wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. These are the people that we had in derision at one point. These are the chosen. You know, you see, they're going to be in shock, man, because they didn't expect the, uh, these group of people to make it. You know. All right, but the hell with this world thinks, man. Who cares about what this world thinks of us? We're just trying to please your Hawaba Shemel Shai. We're trying to be, you know, charitable, you know, brotherly. Okay, we're trying to change, you know. But uh, that that's pretty much it. But I'm gonna reread this uh, Malachi. All right, like I said, this is the uh, scripture that um made me think about this lesson. This is uh Malachi three and three, and he shall sit as a refiner and, and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord Yahweh an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the, uh, in the days of old and as in the former years. All right? So, you know... That's pretty much it. You know, hey, yeah, this uh, purging process is much needed, all right? Something that, that has to happen, okay, in, in, in our walk so that our offerings, all right, can be uh, accepted. Our sacrifices can be accepted to Yahweh Hashem al Shai. You know, we're hoping that we have the, the same, um, if for lack of words, you know, uh, we have like the same offerings as Abel did, all right? We don't want to have those Cain uh, offerings, you see? Because those were rejected. See, Abel's was accepted, man. All right, and that's what we're hoping. Ours, you know, get uh, ours is accepted, so we get mercy, man, and we get salvation. You see, but um, you know, that's pretty much it, brothers. You know, um, I hope this was an edifying lesson. And with that, you know, I'm gonna end it off. I'm gonna give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Also, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to all you brothers. Shalom.